inviting me to this show. I'm very honored to be here. And thank you, Mr. Singh, for taking this time out of your busy schedule to be at this industry show, which is important. This industry show, which is important to us. So, I'm here in the spirit of collaboration. So I grew up in Germany and I've worked in America and I've worked for 30 years in the non-woven and hygiene industry. So I've had quite a few experiences and uh, it is in the spirit of this collaboration that I want to share with you a few slides with you. They are intended as a food for thought for the ongoing discussion, panel discussion that will happen afterwards. So I'm talking about the intersection of the development and expansion of absorbent hygiene products, specifically here also in India, as well as our drive towards more sustainable product development and product use. So, my intention is to share with you what is the absorbent hygiene market, what are the trends, what are the general things happening in the world in that market, and then specifically also in India. I'll share some strategies for sustainable design of these hygiene products, which can be made generally for other products as well. And then I'll go into the question of like, how can we combine this tremendous market growth that is exploding in India with a move towards sustainable industries? So let's first talk about what is absorbent hygiene products, right? So in absorbent hygiene, we have baby diapers, we have sanitary napkins and tampons and other feminine care products. And then we have also adult incontinence for the elderly population and sometimes for light incontinence for younger people as well. And in all of these products, there's also the use of wipes materials. Basically, the simplest of all of the hygiene products with just one non-woven layer. Um, now, specifically to India, what we have is astonishing numbers. As I'm sure you know or have an idea, but I'll bring this here up is that every year in India there are 25 million babies born. Compare that to the United States of America, there are only you know, less than 4 million. Or in Germany, where I was born, it's less than 1 million babies. So the numbers are tremendous. In fact, 25 million babies, that's the whole population of Australia or Sri Lanka, by comparison. So that's significant, that's huge, as you all know. So that's important for the market growth data to keep in mind. Now, <coughs> There are 400 million women in the age of 15, 14 to 15 years here in India. So that's a huge population that we need to take care of as well. Um, and then there are currently about 100 million people aged 65 years and older that are mostly, you know, for this industry interested in the adult incontinence market. So again, those are significant numbers. Now let's look at some other relevant economics for us here. So the GDP growth in India currently is about six to seven percent per year. Now some industry or some finance people are saying that's not very much. I think that's a very healthy and sustainable growth, in fact. Um, and what that means is, and please keep that in mind for the rest of the talk, is that that allows a significant growth of middle income and high income populations here in India which is critical for the move towards sustainability. Now, the personal care market, the hygiene market, is growing even faster than that. So that's 10 to 12% every year. That's huge. And I know that many of you and many of the uh, PIPs that have been here on stages, they have to think about every day about expanding capacity to drive and fulfill that demand. So that's significant. So. The other component here is like specifically absorbent hygiene products, what materials are they using? So two-thirds of the non-woven products, or in wipes it's 100%, they are made out of non-woven materials. Now in India currently there is an oversupply of non-woven availability, uh, which is to a large extent also driven by the COVID-19 crisis, because there were a lot of investments for the medical area as well at that point. Now, what that means is that the primary supply for absorbent hygiene products is provided by an oversupplied market which drives low-cost and petro-based non-woven materials, petrochemical-based, like polypropylene and polyester. So, those are not what we would call sustainable materials, but it is a reality that they have to begin with. Now, most innovation and product growth and development of course, is based on these topics that you see here that are known in popular culture, right? You see them from rock bands and pop bands all over the world. 
you make the product bigger, you make it better, you develop it faster, and you make more and more of it. So that's the theme that we see generally throughout the world, or have been seen throughout the world until now, and continuing. But what that means is that those developments typically are what we call a linear, linear product life cycle. So it's not really a, a, a cycle at all, but it's a cradle from the production of the materials to the grave, which usually means the landfill or wastewater or other emissions that are you know, going into the atmosphere. Now, one thing that we can do, so clearly this is unsustainable, right? Because it gets, uses resources and you dump them. You use more resources and you dump them. So there's no cycle at all. There's no sustainability. Now, if we include recycling, and recycling is the easiest today for polyester materials, now we are starting to become a little bit more sustainable or less unsustainable. So that's the beginning, but we need to look further. But before I go into other details, I want to share with you what a general model is for the market segmentation in absorbent hygiene products, as well as probably other products as well. So we typically, as we have the conversion from non-absorbent hygiene products like we have in many rural communities in India today still. So we're, they're switching over slowly from, from reusable products, from rags, from cloth materials, over to absorbent diapers, disposable diapers. So those diapers fulfill the essential functions that a diaper needs to fulfill, namely the absorbency and avoiding leakage and so forth. So that mom doesn't have mother doesn't have as much of a hard time to take care of these children, has more time to take care of the household, hopefully her career, her education, and all those things. So those are the essential functions. But very quickly, as the population grows, and as you know, careers proceed, as the population is improving, um, as the GDP goes up, as we've seen this, there is the development of improved material, improved products with a higher performance, and they offer comfort. And we call those the mainstream <laughs> products. And then finally, there are those products that we call premium or even super premium. And they offer functions or that aren't really functions.